WND Sports and Flat State Megabucks present Candlepin Skins. It's bowling with a whole new twist as New England's best bowlers battle for cash prizes in every box. Candlepin Skins is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. And once again, we're glad you've joined us here at the Londonderry Bowling Center in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, another edition of Candlepin Skins. And stick around because uh, the way things have been going here lately, it's been very, very exciting down to the finish. Of course, the top two qualifiers move on every week, and uh, that second spot has really been contested. That's right. It's been four weeks in a row now, and it's been decided with three pins or less uh, each of those four weeks. So it's been exciting. That Candlepin Bowling, the, the gist of... Uh, competition is still there even in the skins format winning the close battle for second place last week was Chris Bover and he is now making his sixth consecutive appearance he keeps finding a way to come back <laughs> <laughs> all right Chris Bover and Joe Ashline returning for this week they will be joined by Bob Kelly from Stoneham Massachusetts and Dave Driscoll from Somerville Massachusetts and here's how we do it here on Candlepin Skins a review of the rules our four bowlers compete individually one box at a time each box has a dollar value assigned that's the skin and the high score in each box wins the skin. If the high score is a tie between two or more bowlers, then the dollar value carries over to the next box. The top two bowlers in total pinfall, as I mentioned, will return the following week. So there's unlimited opportunity to return as long as you finish first or second. $10 in each of the first three boxes of each game, $15 in the next three, $25 in boxes seven, eight, and nine, and the 10th box in each of our two games worth $50. We will be back to start this match on Candlepin Skins right after this timeout. Don't go away. Back we are and ready to go here on Candlepin Skins. Chris Bover and Dave Driscoll first on the line. Chris Bover, sixth consecutive week. Dave Driscoll making his first appearance with us here on the wins. He leaves himself the one, seven, and eight. Chris will shoot at the half Worcester. Almost for Dave. Chris takes a nine. As does Dave Driscoll. So we are underway here. Bob Kelly, the left-hander. on the back row. Joe Ashline for the skin. No. That wood <laughs> may have to be removed. It's going to have to be, and they, uh, Bob Kelly will try to get a 10 box here because he figured maybe, yes, there it is. save the skin. That may be enough to win it. Although, if that piece of wood is out of play, yeah. then uh, Joe may have a shot at an easy 10. There's Bob's 10. Yeah, and it is out. So Joe should have a clear uh, play here on that wood and the four pin. For the carryover. And there it is. So box number two will be worth $20. This is a busy time of year for us here. Our candle pin bowling action every weekend. Oh, oh, big strike, Dave Driscoll. He looks to be very much at ease here in the early going. A little unorthodox in the style. He actually comes off the, the right foot, which uh, is normally the left foot is a sliding foot for a right-hander. But 
Seems pretty comfortable doing it his way. Chris, Sar uh, Chris Sargent, where did he come from? <laughs> Another pretty good young yeah. bowler. You know, I was thinking about that. We go back and talk about some of the, just the young bowls we've had on this year. Right, and, exactly. And, and the streaks that they've had. Here's the strike by Dave Driscoll. Sets him up for a possible skin. A couple of guys up now who can throw a lot of strikes, though. Joe Ashline, and he almost got it. The <laughs> seven pin came back, but. I think he gets more enjoy, enjoy, more joy out of taking it away from someone <laughs> than winning it himself. <laughs> that little, uh, little grin when he does that. But he didn't take it away from Dave Driscoll that time. No, that's no. a $20 skin for Dave. And a spare for Joe Ashline on the single. Almost. Another 10 for Bob. So the third skin now worth, or rather the third box, I should say, worth $10. A near miss there. Wow, that ball hit on both sides of the nine pin. Bob Kelly shot. Chris Bovier on lane 30. Missing the head pin. Dave Driscoll on a strike. Most for Dave. Nine fill on the strike. Ten box for Chris. And likewise for Dave Driscoll. So it'll take a mark to win the skin here in the third. Not exactly spare leaves here. Boy, that seven pin looked like it came about two inches up off the deck, didn't it? <laughs> it did. <laughs> Third 10 in a row for Bob Kelly. And it's an eight for Joe Ashline. So the tens carry over. Watch the seven pin in the corner. Up and back down again. <laughs> Dave Driscoll back on the head pin and another near strike. Chris Bovier looking for his first mark. He has not had a lot to shoot at yet. Dave Driscoll has another mark, a spare this time. Oh, oh so great Chris. shot. Fine shot. That was a tough shot. It looked easy because of the way it went down, but it was not. No. Joe Ashline will be next to throw, but he'll have to wait until Cindy Sissom does a little house cleaning down by the pins. Cindy handling that duty for us, as she always does, in addition to uh, working the big scoreboard here for the bowlers and uh, fans here at the Londonderry Bowling Center. Joe Ashline gets the extra pin this time. Set up pretty well for him, I would say. Take a strike by Bob Kelly to win the skin outright, but, so we'll have a carryover. <laughs> Spears by Chris and Dave already up there, and now probably Joe. Yep. Oh, let's see, one time, no. Bob does not have a mark yet. Nine bucks.
Chris Bovair, Dave Driscoll, each filling spares here. Big nine drop. Nothing touched the five, though. Dave Driscoll just four. Oh, a missed single. Ten box for Chris, 57 half. Nine for Dave, 61 half for him. Bob Kelly. Boy, that was a good ball. Oh, my <laughs> word. Saw that coming all the way. His first mark, and it's a big one. Oh, but Joe Ashline <laughs> takes the money away. Oh, and they're just <laughs> having a little fun about that over the, over the ball rack. <laughs> the strike to take the skin away. And we will take a break here on Candlepin Skins. Lots more to come. Don't go away. Ready to go once again. Now got a four box carryover working. $55 skin. Wow. Dave for the spare. Gave it a run. Nope. Chris has uh, missed a couple of shots in this game that we've come to expect him to make, I guess, even at the age of 19, based on uh, the great poise that he has shown while he's been here. Now that one, he actually hit the object pen, but he was just a little full. Bob Kelly and Joe both working on strikes now. First Joe Ashline. We've only got a nine showing for the skin. Oh, almost a double. You see something that Bobby Kelly throws a strike here. Well, well easier for Joe being the single pin. Got He's it. Got his spare. Is it enough for the skin? And yes, it is. That'll be a $55 skin for Joe Ashline. And a nine box for Bob Kelly. Well, once again, Joe Ashline is in the lead, but look at the other scores. There's four pins separating the other three bowlers. $25 skin here in the seventh. Chris Bovair on the two and the seven for the spare. Dave Driscoll, everything but the head pin. And the 10. Well, Bob might have had an easier shot had the two pins stayed up. Joe Ashline, another. Uh oh, nine. watch out. Watch out. Yes, for the strike, and to win the skin. <laughs> and Bob Kelly converts the spare. Fine shot. 
So Joe Ashline, who had $225 in skins prize money last week, is off to a good start this week. Another look at Bob Kelly's spare. Diamond lead for Dave Driscoll. And thin hit for Chris and only got, what, four on the spare. Oh, great. Ooh. Looked like a pretty good shot on the, tr on the diamond for Dave, but it didn't carry. Nine boxes for both Chris and Dave. Joe Ashley, I'm working on a strike. Bob Kelly on a spare. Joe's got a pretty good string going right now. And yeah, Joe's uh, got an angle on the wood in front of the next to the three pin. He has to be careful because he throws so hard the ball's going to take off and might not catch the seven. Uh -oh. well, you know, yeah, it looked like he let up just a little bit on yeah, that maybe. ball, which probably was a very good play. You and I have discussed that before, Dan, how uh, you know, a guy who's accustomed to throwing the ball fast all the time, sometimes it's difficult for them to change speeds. That's right. They lose some of the accuracy sometimes. Just caught it with the wood in the back. Yeah, spare was enough to win the skin for Joe in the eighth frame, so he's won the sixth, seventh, and eighth box skins. And really building up a commanding lead in the total pinfall race. Too. Oh, big ball for Chris Bovair. Somehow the five pin is still up. Yeah, last time Chris missed the five pin for a spare in this lane. I tend to believe he's not going to miss it twice in a row. Right you are. Oh. Oh. Another near miss for Dave Driscoll. They've got the skin in the second box, and it's been uh, carryovers until Joe Ashline's one last three. Yeah, Bob Kelly and Chris Bovair are still waiting to get on the skins tote board. Joe's been taking almost all of it so far. Bob will have a look at the diamond. Joe Ashline has five marks in a row. And a chance for six. Coming very, up. very good chance with a wood angle behind the head pin. Another piece of wood in front of the ten. So if he's on the head pin, he should get that for a spare. Bob missing on the diamond. Oh, Joe's got it. Six in a row. A nine box for Bob. Well, the same pattern uh, continues. Joe Ashline piling up a lead, and the other three guys slugging it out for second. Advantage Chris Bovair right now because he has the markup in the ninth. That box a carryover, of course, with the spares, and so we now have a, as you just saw, $75 skin here in the tenth. Dave Gris Driscoll leaves the four horsemen to the right. Big break there for Chris Bovair as he looked like he was going to possibly get a half Worcester on that ball and wound up taking seven. But missing the spare opportunity. Ten for Dave, 108. Nine for Chris, 115. Joe Ashline, oh, now he's going to have to work if he's going to get his seventh mark in a row. Just a three fill on that spare. Hey, that 
You might have heard Joe he <laughs> doing his own commentary as soon as he let the ball go. And Joe will take a six box, a 149. Good for the overall lead. And Bob Kelly takes a 10. He's got a 109. So a great battle for second again, as has been the pattern here the last several weeks. There are the scores. After game one, we're going to have a big carryover. It'll be worth $85 when we start game two after this word. We're back here on Candlepin Skins, and for those of you who've been wondering since the six box, will they make the correction on that <laughs> scoreboard? Yes, we did. It was a 10 for Chris Bover in the sixth. So the score as it now reads is correct, 116, not 115, as we had mentioned earlier. Joe Ashline in the overall lead at 149. Great battle for second. Here's how the uh, Skins money has been doled out so far. Joe Ashline taking the uh, bulk of it to this point. Chris and Bob have yet to get on the board. Hoping to do so here in game two. So, you mentioned at the top of the show, Dan, uh, the last four weeks, three pins or less have decided second place. We may be headed to a similar finish today. One, two, four, and nine pins for Chris. Ooh, Ooh that oh. ball came flying in front of the nine pin. Don't forget tomorrow at noon from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, week two of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Let's see what happened with this ball. Off the sidewall and right in front of the nine. Dave Driscoll. Good pocket hit and oh look at the lead. my. Oh. Eight and nine. Gonna need some help from the curtain. <laughs> Didn't get it. That's really about your only play on a shot like that. Yeah, just throw it as hard as you can. And unless you were in San Francisco, <laughs> maybe hope for a tremor or something, but that's... Good concentration to get both singles, though, for the 10 bucks. That was a pretty good ball. Bob Kelly. Just missed the head pin, not by very much. Four horsemen left, one, two, four, and seven. Piece of wood in the back probably won't come into play. We're down to just two weeks now before our... That was a 10 for Bob. This, this keyboard is really sticking today. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's what it is. I figured there had to be a reason. I didn't realize it was sticking way back in that sixth frame. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, unless Joe makes a shot here, we will have another carryover. And we've already had a carryover from the first game. Well, Joe was trying for that spear. Eight box. So another carryover, and now the second box will be worth $95. The one, two, and nine with no playable wood. But a couple of pieces in the channel that may help if he's able to kick something over there. Nope. As I started to say a moment ago, as I started to say a moment ago, we're just two weeks away now from the start of the New Hampshire All Events State Championship coverage here on the winds of New England. It'll be in the Saturday time slot, this time slot, two weeks from today at 12 noon. We'll begin our coverage first of the women's final 
which will run for two weeks, and then the men's final for two weeks. Two six-game matches spread over two weeks each. Dave Driscoll gets the break this time and takes advantage of it. Spare up for that uh, $95 skin. Gonna have to show us one here. <laughs> Playing the inside and went a little too far inside. Played it there again and almost made it. Nine box. So it's Dave Driscoll's skin, unless Joe Ashline can do something about it. Dave and Joe have won all the skins so far. Oh, and Joe's got another one. <laughs> With the strike. $95. He is already at $200 for the day. He had $225 last week. Wow. Just, Just a little tap on the eight. Yeah, just enough to knock that eight pin out of there. That's nine skins for $200 already for Joe Ashline. Nine out of a possible 11. Yeah, Chris has got the nine pin, but he's got a roadblock in front, I believe. He's gonna take the wood. Oh, oh wow. Twenty-eight after three. Take a look at that one. Watch the wood come off the left side wall. Dave on a spare, coming back. Oh, oh yes. big break! Except the wood turned. Let's see where that ends up. Well, move back in pretty good shape for him. It would appear. Got it. Two marks in a row for Dave Driscoll. This is a $10 skin here in the third. Wow, triangle, but look at the wood in front. Just no chance. And now the 10. Bob's had kind of a tough day. Running fourth right now. But still within striking distance though. Well within striking distance. Joe working on a strike. <laughs> Joe working on a strike. Uh, just, I'm just <laughs> chuckling because Dave Driscoll's gotta be thinking, oh sure, now you throw the one. <laughs> Last box, he threw a strike to take $95 yeah, Dave's, away. Dave's got a spare up now, though. Oh, he almost <laughs> took it away from him there. Nine fill for Joe. So Dave Driscoll will take that skin in the third. It's a $10 skin, and Joe and Dave have all the money still to this point. Chris Bovair back on the head pin and kicks out the seven. Looking for his first mark of his second game. Yeah, be careful this wood though. Yeah, important mark there for Chris. Spear in the fourth. Chris finding himself in the rare position of having to come from behind. Dave misses the head pin. He'll have the four horsemen left plus the nine. And 
almost. Ten bucks. Fifty-three through four for Dave. Let's see the bottom. He leads Chris by seven. Bob Kelly has another triangle, this time without a roadblock. Two, four, and five. On it. Yes. Oh, off the wall. Little Had to heavy. wait. Yep. yep. <laughs> A little weight on it. A little heavy on the two pin, but he got a nice kick off the left side wall. Watch this. It creates a possible carryover, except, <laughs> except for Joe. <laughs> and he almost did it again. This time a nine drop. I think you're right, though, Dan. I think uh, Joe likes very much being in that fourth position. Mm -hmm. Gets the spare. It suits him too because he can throw a strike anytime he gets up there. Right. So this fifth box will now be worth $30. And three of our four bowlers will be working on spares. Chris Bovair is one of them. Three, six, four, seven. No wood. Seven. Dave Driscoll, right back on the head pin, but not much to show for it. Five, eight, and ten. Let's see where the wood settles down. Now, it's got to take a piece of the wood out front. Oh, he oh, yes. got it. Good shot for Dave. The wood being out that far helped him. Off the 10 pin and over to get the 8. Ball continued through for the 5. Bob Kelly working on a spare. 6 fill. And he ran it down for the spare. Stays within striking distance of both Chris and Dave. Three behind Chris, seven behind Dave. And Joe Ashline in that same spot again. Strike for the skin, or it's a carryover, and it will be another carryover. Eight on the fill for Joe. Already over 200. After 14 boxes. And another mark. That is 10 marks in 15 boxes for Joe Ashline. He's the leader, but a great battle for second, and we'll be back with more of it on Candlepin Skins after these words. We are back, and Chris Bover with a six-week run on the line. As of the moment, he is just four pins out of second place, but both Dave Driscoll and Bob Kelly are working on marks as they come up here in the sixth. Chris pulled that one just a bit. Ten. A forty-five dollar skin here in the sixth. Now the next three bowlers working on marks. Big ball for Dave Driscoll. Drops nine.
And another spare for Dave. That's four marks in the last five boxes for Dave Driscoll. Bob Kelly's going to try to stay with him. See if he can catch him for second. Oh, oh my. Through the middle, spread eagle. And more importantly, just four on the fill. Oh, how about this? Oof. Bob is from Stoneham, Massachusetts. Works as a mail carrier for the U.S. Postal Service. And a fine 10 after the spread eagle. Gave it a run for the spare, too. Let's take another look at that. Cut the three pin over into the four. Just didn't get any other action, though. Dave Driscoll's spare leads for the skin. And it's looking pretty good right now, I would say. <laughs> that is just a two fill for Joe Ashline. Joe doesn't really have to worry too much, uh, I don't think, about fills at this point. He's got a pretty comfortable lead. Wow. Boy, he made that close. So give the $45 skin to Dave Driscoll. That's a great 10 right there. Two great tens there, Bob Kelly and Joe Ashline. Yeah, historical uh, show here. If we have two bowls that get shut out from skins. Yes. It's been all uh, Joe and Dave as far as the skins money goes. Several times we've had one bowler shut out, but never two. Well, Chris needs to get some marks up on the board. Six, seven, ten. Piece, all kinds of wood out in front. Oh, wow. Nothing touched the seven. I thought maybe it was going to be the ten that would create the problem. But instead, the seven was still standing. Four in the spare for Dave Driscoll. And gets out with a no, a no it's a 10. He just got that 10 before he pushed the button. Open box for Bob Kelly to work on. He needs to put a mark up trying to catch Dave for second. Still has to watch out for Chris. Oh, yeah, that was a very boy. good looking first ball, and look at that. Four, seven, eight, and ten. Trying to coax that wood to come out a little further so he can <laughs> use that for the ball for the ten pin, but no. Oh. Just a seven. Two tens up there right now for the skin. It's a $25 skin here in the seventh. Joe Ashline continuing to hold a comfortable lead. He will have at least probably a 30 pin advantage uh, over second place and even more over third. After completing his action in this box and if he picks up this single pin, he'll have the skin as well. There it is. Ten skins now, $225 for Joe Ashline. That's exactly what he had last week. Not too late for Chris, but he's got to start marking. I was going to say, if things hold the way they are right now, Dan, not only will... Uh, Chris and Bob be shut out of skins money, but they'll also be shut out of returning next week as uh, Joe and Dave are threatening to take it all here. Both pinfall and prize money. Right, 
eight box for Chris. Chris has just never been able to find the range today. Very unusual for him, just one mark in this game through eight boxes. I'll tell you what, Dave Driscoll making his uh, first appearance on television with us today, and he has looked very impressive. Drop nine there, leaves himself the two pin for another mark, and... No, nope, not this time. Wood almost came back, but that's a... Not a costly miss yet, but that would have certainly put him uh, in a position to shut out the other field, the rest of the field, I should say. It could be, he could look back at it as costly yep. later. There is the ball that Bob Kelly has been waiting for. It's looking a little more costly. Strike up for Bob Kelly in the eighth. Joe Ashline just cruising at 236 already with a spare up working. And this is a strike by Bob Kelly. Seven pin finally goes. Oh, and Joe uh -huh. takes the money away. <laughs> Joe took the money away again. <laughs> Look at Bob. <laughs> Dissed him. <laughs> no high five from him. So sorry. Oh, that's funny. Ninth box now worth $50. I was only trying to throw a nine drop. Joe apparently has decided it's okay if Dave wins a little money, but nobody else. <laughs> Nope, oh, Chris misses another spare. So it'll go as a nine. And Chris is running out of time. With Dave already ahead of him and Bob working on a spare, or rather a strike. Chris may be in a uh, dire situation when he comes up for the tenth. 247. That's the good news for, for Dave. The wood is not, though. The tendency to leave this seven pin standing. Yep. There it is. Leaves the door open for Bob Kelly and make one last run at Dave Driscoll for that second spot. Bob Kelly has five marks today, and every time he has marked, Joe Ashline has marked on top of him, <laughs> including two strikes on top of Bob's two strikes. Oh, boy. Uh -oh. <laughs> Big ball here. Gets a seven, Phil. It was an important ball to get as much as he could on the strike. And a nice 10 after the half worcester. 10 leads for the skin right now. Pulls him within 10 pins, 11 pins of Dave Driscoll. <laughs> Joe Ashline is lapping the field today. And there's another strike. And the skin. $50 more. That's $275 now for Joe Ashline. Chris Bovair needs strikes and a miracle. Just, uh, yeah. Being on this many weeks, you're bound to run into a week like this. You just hope that your your worst ever effort is is higher than what he's bowling. He's, sometimes you have those days, but I think he realizes just uh, a little over 200 is not going to bring you back. He's nope. had a great run, though. He really has a 96 and a 212 for Chris Bover. So his uh, streak will end at six in a row. Great run, though, for Chris. Battle now is between Dave and Bob. And what's important for here for Dave, not necessarily a mark, but pin count. That's right. Bob is going to need a mark, but he may need a double strike. 
Well, right now, Dave is 19 pins ahead of Bob. And there you go. That's a big pin right there. So now, Bob Kelly must throw spare strike or strike spare. To tie. To tie, right. Or he could throw a double, double strike, strike and, to win. and take right. second place. Certainly capable of doing that. Nope. 232 is the total for Dave Driscoll. Not to be. So Dave Driscoll will be coming back next week. And nines are good for the skin right now, but I have a feeling <laughs> that's not going to stay. <laughs> uh, Joe's going to try and add another $50 to his winnings. Contain your enthusiasm, Joe. I mean, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a double strike working. How about oh, a triple? there it is! <laughs> oh, my. Oh, just another day at the office. Well, that takes care of that. Need that many, Joe. <laughs> $325, a new record for skins money for Joe Ashline. Four. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Good, Joe. He's going to have a this tremendous for, total. Well, these two for $175. Uh, i will have to settle for $174. And $323. Wow. Joe Ashline. Very impressive, number one. And how about Dave Driscoll? First time on television. He'll be back next week as well. There are two winners, not only of total pinfall, but also of all the skin surprise money, too. We'll be back to tell you about it when we wrap it up in a minute. Well, we see one long streak come to an end today as Chris Bovair's run ends at six, but now Joe Ashline all of a sudden is up to four in a row. Uh, he'll be back for his fourth time next week. Is he awesome or what? <laughs> I mean, just 323 bowling this kind of format. That's just uh, awesome bowling. That's all I can say. Uh, how about the numbers? A total of 14 marks in 20 boxes for Joe, and he never went more than one box without marking. And uh, only three schmirks that we get out of him when he took those <laughs> away from his buddy, uh, Bob Kelly. Uh, they'll be talking about that for weeks, I'm sure. I have a feeling you're right. Let's check the numbers now for this one. It's Joe Ashline and Dave Driscoll on top of the leaderboard. They will both be back next week. And guess what? It's Joe Ashline and Dave Driscoll on top of the other leaderboard as well as they combine to take all of the Skins prize money today. Joe Ashline with $325. That tops a uh, 225 that he had last week. Uh, he's just unbelievable. He just knew every time he got up there he had a chance of throwing a strike, and he did it most times. <laughs> Don't forget, tomorrow at noon from Park Place Lanes, week two of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Next Saturday, of course, we are right back here with another edition of Candlepin Skins. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. See you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us, everybody.